Powerlifters are the strongest people in the world. People come to the gym sometimes, they see six or seven 45 pound plates on each side of the bar. These people are just freaked out. We have world records in this gym, we have American records, we have all time records in this gym. You can't come in here and not be ready to go. You'll get hurt. The intensity, it sometimes gets a little bit overbearing. It's part of the sport. If you don't have that intensity, you're going to end up getting stapled to the platform. What we do here, it is dangerous. You know, you have to be aggressive when you come in here. You can nail it, Jim! You have to be very ferocious. After, come on! Come on now! At times, we step back and say, fuck, that's that's a lot of weight, and something terrible could have happened there. When you walk on a platform, it's you in the bar, and there's nobody else. There's nobody to save you. When you unrack a thousand pounds, in your mind, you're going, oh, fuck. You know, you know, like, I can barely stand with this. How's it going to go when I go down all the way? You start shaking, the plates start making noise. God damn. Yeah, I remember watching one of the strongmen meets and um, uh, Marius Pujanowski was doing a deadlift and he blew a, a vessel in his nose and it bled a little bit. That's commonplace in our gym. We gotta get that blood out of the guy. A lot of blood, sweat, tears, and body fat in this gym. To do this, you have to be a little fucking crazy. You gotta want to be in this environment. You gotta need to be able to be criticized. I'm not gonna go up! It ain't nothing, Pitcher! The commercial gyms made it clear that they don't want us in there. So many powerlifters like myself have uh, formed gyms to help give us a home, you know, help give us a place to the lift. We're talking about this forever, let's do it! There's a lot of assholes in here, there's a lot of nice guys in here, there's a huge spectrum of personalities in this place. Don't milk me, come on. What's up, bitches? You know, Mark is brilliant in his own way. He uh, is not a detail-oriented guy at all, so, I mean, sometimes that drives people in the, in the gym crazy. We have two kids. I got a, a baby girl named Quinn. Jake is six years old. Jerry Seinfeld said having kids is like having a blender in your house with the top off of it. And you, you hit it on high and shit goes everywhere. The best thing about Mark is that when I'm a hothead, he's the coolest guy in the gym always. Nothing rattles the guy, nothing, or he won't let you know that it bothers him. And that's the cool thing about Mark. And he and I watch each other. We've always got this little rivalry going back and forth. It's a quiet rivalry we don't talk about. And, and it's ongoing. Haas is one of the most intense people you're going to find in our gym. He's a big guy. It's not hard to piss the dude off. Haas? <laughs> Haas reminds me of a big, angry, raging bull. You never know what mood he's in, so you kind of have to kind of walk up to him, walk around him a little bit. Scott. And just feel him out, if, see if he's, if he's pissed off for the day. If he is, you kind of just want to stay out of his way. What the fuck? thing that pisses me off the most, people standing around, taking the weight, using a bar that they don't need to use, they don't need to do that shit. Quit whining. Um, because of his temperament and personality, a lot of people compare me to him um, because our temper is very short. Janet is tremendously strong. Uh, she's one of the stronger women in the country. I don't think initially when she came in, she didn't buy into the training system. Once she did, she started making great progress. She's just been doing great. It seems like meet in and meet out. She's setting records. Come on, Mark! They can be disgusting at times. Ah! Um, whenever Janet's not lifting, she's helping. I'm like the surrogate mother here. I always make sure that we have food at the meets and things like that. Ready? All the good stuff, the medianoches, papas rellenas. What pisses me off is laziness. People that come in and only do their lifts don't help rack or unrack the weight. Nobody's a prima donna here. No, oh, you're full of crap. No. And people that come in and that don't shut the door, I want to just literally just take the door off the handles and just bash them over the head with it. You know, you have that kid in like third grade that eats paste. You know, everybody makes fun of, sits in the corner, eat paste. It's really loud. That's trusting soul. I, I'm probably known as the most heartless and disgusting person in the gym. Trust is the trailer trash kid and the wife beater who uh, doesn't know how to clean his crotch, so he'll generally have some sort of infection on a regular basis. I was looking at my balls. He's the one that always has his hands in his pants, so don't ever shake his hands. His hand will be in his pants six, seven times an hour. So he calls them ingrown hairs that are infected, but uh, I've never had one. Juan Laiha, he's a uh, ex-Marine. He's a very intense guy. 
He's a guy who's had a, you know, a little bit of a troubled past. But she has. How do you know she has herpes? Because I compared it to the one I had. Okay, well, that makes sense, actually. One of the greatest quotes in super training history is uh, Juan Laiha saying, Damn, those trannies were hot. Who's in your sister? She's in jail. You'll hear him talking about porn. You'll hear him talking about fighting. There's a lot of guys here with prayer scenes. Uh, tongue, nipple, cock. Prince Albert, that's the one on the cock. He gets very frustrated, you know, if he misses a lift. He'll blame the other lifters in the gym, and the other lifters in the gym will be like, oh, I can't believe he's acting like that. Big Fat Roy. He's uh, always telling us how he weighs like 399, but our scale goes to 440. When he weighed in for a meet, he tacked it out. He's one of the more explosive lifters you'll ever see. He'll take 800 pounds, and before you can blink your eye, boom, he'll smash it back up. And Ray will oftentimes get more excited about your lift even than you would. You know, I've made lifts and meets, and he's like, yeah! He's always the guy who says, hey, I don't eat anything bad. But you look in his truck, there's fast food wrappers all over the freaking place. You have any breakfast burritos in there? No, I do. No, I do. Great guy, huge heart, but uh, a little overweight. But aren't we all? He looks very fuscular, which is fat and muscular at the same time. A lot of us aren't very lean, but we don't really care. Well, we're at the Fit Expo in Los Angeles uh, for a meet. Are you driving? Uh, I rented a little car. Alright, sit on the stick shift. How are we gonna fit? And to get six people of that size, you know, 270 pounds plus, and Janet into a car with myself is impossible, but we did it. Uh, we went about two blocks and I realized the car's uh, suspension was gonna break because guys like this are, are, are not your normal human being. Fucking starving. Gotta get some meat. Food's a big part of it. You need to consume a certain amount of calories to maintain your weight. You know, that, that, that's the kind of thing that powerlifting is based on. Double suck power. I'd rather squat a grand and be fat than be skinny and squat 300. It's not about mirrors and treadmills and the way you look. This is about being strong. In powerlifting, look like Tarzan, lift like Jane. This uh, body's not just for looks. Brian Spencer, our resident male model. Ryan Spencer uh, has been lifting with us for about three years and uh, you know, he works over at the Capitol building. So you run him for office. I'd vote for you man. You know, let's go. Let's get it going. Uh, free lap dances for the whole month of March. That would be a dumbbell on every sidewalk. Spencer, I call him my pocket Hercules. I'm pretty sure I am the strongest guy uh, in the state capitol building and the governor, remind you, the governor is in this building. Spence being the uh, Democrat uh, policy advisor that he is. I come in and tease him and, and mess with him about it. I mean, obviously, Hostin is going to vote for me into office, and I definitely wouldn't vote for him in office. Which I represent. I'm going to get a whole what does America represent. But right. he'll, he'll learn. He's very small. <laughs> but counting for a pound, he's one of the strongest guys that we have here at the gym. I mean, he'll squat 600, he'll deadlift 650. Oh, oh, oh man. But he's still a midget. Talk freaking boss about pound for pound, drives me crazy. People talk about how many times body weight that is. He did this for a little guy. It's not my fault you're small. It's not my fault. You're small or you're weaker. I don't care. Ed Koo, you gotta take in little increments. He's one of our newest members to super training. Ah! So pretty boy Ed comes in, tells everybody what to do. He's got his pretty hair. He's very loud and obnoxious. My best squat's 1160, his best squat's about 650, so maybe he shouldn't tell me what to do. I guarantee you that pretty boy son of a bitch is in there fixing his hair and everything, so let's go make fun of him. We'll wait a couple seconds, taking a leak. Oh! I do like to take care of myself a little bit more than they do. Uh, I do like to do my hair, I don't know, shave, maybe manscape a little bit, shop for actually, for clothes. <laughs> And then once they found out that I had a beauty college, the floodgates were open. So we're going to be going into uh, Ed Koo's beauty salon or beauty college. And uh, we're take a couple guys down there and beauty them up a little bit. They didn't know what they're in for actually today. They just knew they were coming to the beauty college. Uh, I spoke with a couple instructors, some of the students, without a good idea to maybe give Mark a wax. Uh, couldn't really do anything with his head, he had no hair. I've never had a chest waxing before, so I, I don't know what to expect going in. I don't know, I don't know if it's gonna hurt or if it's gonna sting or 
or how it all works. I don't know if they're going to shear me down first because I have a decent amount of hair there. Let's just thank the Lord it's not my penis. Billion. Maybe that's next. I don't know. You know, it stings. Yeah, I mean, you definitely feel it for sure, but I'm just trying to bite my tongue and, and take it like a man. Yeah. Tim McDonald, Ryan Cole, they got haircuts today. Uh, more than a haircut, I told the uh, instructors and students to give them a little edge, like a little edgy look. Okay, we're out here getting our hair cut and colored and shit, and, and, and Schwag's back there just getting a facial. Uh, I mean, can we all go give him a facial right now? Massage cream. I don't know what happened. I look like a baby. Look like a fucking gorilla back here still, but the rest of it's, the rest of it's all good. Yeah, I think Cove actually will rock that look for a little while. Um, you know, the, the pre-coup look, uh, you saw he had his hair just all scraggly, kind of had no look. With this look, I think he'll actually get laid. And I came in, Ed gave me a drink, and then I fucking wake up like this. <laughs> My ass hurts. We have a hard time sometimes around regular people. Man, I'm cold. Hey, wanna fuck? Anything goes inside this gym, and well, the reason why I do it, I heard it makes your penis bigger. So I've been doing it for years, and it really hasn't paid off. But. We we let words fly, and we we uh, we don't care if we offend each other. And uh, I did not realize there was an older lady inside that beauty salon. If they were my children, I would beat their rear ends because they should be nicer around women. We were just having a good time, and. She said we were rude and uh, and this and that, so she took offense to it. Uh, I actually thought that would probably turn her on at that point. You know, she hasn't been turned on in a long time, looks like. I turned the sinks on a little bit, what did you think? <laughs> this is our sacred uh, record board here. Nobody's allowed to touch this board unless you break someone's record. So, you know, let's say I broke Andy Zavala's record. I get to erase it and throw my own record up. Otherwise, don't touch the fucking board. Sometimes there's tension built up from weeks before, pent up aggression. Maybe the guys aren't getting laid or whatever. And, uh, you know, things get heated, they get into it. Yeah, maybe. I was lifting up the bar, I think it was 600 pounds on it. Um, not a crazy amount of weight, but enough weight to hurt you. When people aren't paying attention, people get hurt. And uh, Juan wasn't paying attention, he didn't release the rack. Go ahead and move the fucking rack! So I yelled at him to release the rack, and then when I got done, he wanted to argue about why he didn't release the rack. Dude, you're fucking holding the fucking rack! I couldn't see it! See what? The rack go up! I couldn't see the bar go up! How could it go up? You weren't fucking looking! The thing that made me mad was when he called me a dumb shit. What are you gonna do? What? What, what are you gonna do? do? Fucking push me! Don't, don't you ever! What? Don't ever fucking what are you gonna touch do? me! Uh, don't ever touch me! I think I really made him mad, but he pushes me, and he doesn't need to lay his hands on anyone. Come on, motherfucker! What? Fuck you! No, no, hey, no, hey, 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 what are you gonna do? Fucking pussy. Don't fucking call me a pussy. Call me a pussy. Call me a pussy. And we both went at it. I called him a pussy, and he hates that, so now I know his weakness. Call me a pussy now. Call me a pussy now. For what? For what? What you gonna do? Still run your fucking mouth as usual. It's done, it's over with. Live tomorrow and move on to Sunday. It's, you know, it's a family fight, right? Don't get me wrong, I've punched the fucker if he wants to get hit, but... Yeah, things get a little heated in here, and uh, I think it's good, man. We're all part of the team. If there wasn't any fights or any controversy, then that just means no one gives a fuck. At the end of the day, we're there for each other. We come here, we travel together, we fight together, we joke together. Sometimes we cry together, is that right? Yeah, we cry together. It's just one great big dysfunctional family. I mean, these people are my friends. If I heal over tomorrow, these are the guys who are going to carry the box. The whole premise of the gym is just for everybody to continue to get better. It doesn't matter where you start, but it matters where you finish. I think we're all on a mission. We're on a mission to get stronger. There's a couple sayings on the wall of the gym, and my favorite one is either you're in or you're in the way.